what are some of the important financial concepts that you may not be aware of? That is the subject of this video. Hey, welcome to the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson, and today I am here with Ken Holmes. Ken is one of the um, financial planners on our team. And so we've got uh, some questions and answers that we're gonna do here today. So Ken, what, what's a common question that, that you get? You bet. So we've actually had a lot of clients just kind of pose different questions to us. One of them is, you know, with all the years of financial planning that we've been in, what is it that individuals might think they know, but necessarily don't know, or that they should know in financial planning? Yeah, that's a good question. I think one of the biggest surprises probably is just how much change there has been um, in financial services. It's in the world, right? The world has changed. Our economy has changed. Technology has had a huge impact on everything, especially financial services. And, and a lot of times people may not be aware of that. There's also a lot of innovation. Um, you know, I think about, <laughs> you know, like the medieval medical practices. For, for literally thousands of years, a common practice was called what bleed letting mm-hmm. or blood bloodletting is what they say. And and uh, the doctors, if whether you had a sore throat, you had the plague, uh, whatever these illnesses was, they would come and they would they would drain some of your blood, right? They figured you must have some bad blood, so we're going to let some out. For a very long time, that was considered the best medical thinking, right? And it, 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 truth is, that wasn't good for them, right? There, there, might, there might have been a placebo effect right. where people think, oh, I got some of that bad blood out, so now I'm okay. Um, but it's actually it was more, more harmful than not, right? And so there's a lot of outdated information in financial services, things that we've just known forever or, or believed forever that have changed quite a bit. And so... Um, I guess that's the first thing. Don't underestimate innovation right. in financial services and in financial planning. So with the way that financial planning has changed, what what are some examples that you would say, right? There's different innovations. You know, we hear a lot of terminology out there. Fiduciaries, you know, what does that mean? Uh, some people understand fiduciary terms. Maybe some people don't understand the fiduciary terms. What about holistic planning? We talk in you know, your book, you talk about holistic planning. Right. What does that all really mean? Holistic is, is whole. It's looking at it. It's, it's very common, very traditional. For example, a lot of the big financial firms, they're just looking at an investment portfolio. And they're looking at rate of return and asset allocation, and, and that's it, right? Holistic is saying, well, that's just one small aspect. There's, there's so many other things that come into play that's going to impact your finances. Um, and so of, there's, there's obvious things, you know, taxes and considering various types of risk that could be protected, sequence risk, um, inflation risk, health care, the changes there, the need for long-term care, uh, real, real estate, um, savings rate. You know, there's, there's, there's a whole motivational factor that goes into it. If you have someone that, you know, a rate of return is only one, one thing, but there there are dozens of things that could be done that will result in greater wealth or greater income, and that's it's through holistic planning. It's through the other elements that go into it. It's 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 creating efficiencies and minimizing risk and r- minimizing the loss of assets. You know, it's um, being in this industry for, well, a couple of decades now, right? Yeah. Uh, you hear all sorts of different questions, different ideas that come from clients. And listening to you on the holistic side and innovation, I'm, I'm thinking about it as when we start, well, one, the schools don't really teach you how to do finances, right? Right. They're not telling you save this, you just get your job, you got your employer and say, and start investing in your 401k. But there's no real planning that goes along with that. So we go off of history. A lot of times I I hear this, well, you know, this is the way I've always been told to do something. Mm -hmm. This has got to work. Yeah. Right. 
But kind of what you're saying is with the innovations and things that have changed throughout the years, generations, yeah. there's other things we should be aware of that maybe we need to start thinking about that maybe is a little outside of the box from mm -hmm. what we've always been told. Yeah. Yeah. So in your book, you mention how there's times when we kind of have to unlearn maybe something that we have learned in the past. Yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. Um, I think it was Yoda who said, what did he say? Uh, we have to unlearn what we've learned. And so there, there are certain things that have been true, you know, certain rules of thumb where it's just like, it's kind of like everyone has accepted it. And sometimes you, just, you want to challenge that. Challenge what people, you think you know something. And so to unlearn it just means learning more about it to where you understand the full full picture and realize that there's there's some things that are no longer true. Things that used to be true, some things are just simply not true anymore in, in the realm of financial planning and financial services. Yeah, that's great. So as an example of unlearning something, right? I mentioned just earlier that I've always been told the best thing for me is to always put into my IRAs, my 401ks, right? I want to take that tax deduction today because I'm going to be in a lower tax bracket when I retire. Yeah. Right? A lot of times what we find out, when you retire, you may not be in a lower tax bracket. Let's not even take into account the fact that taxes could increase. Let's say taxes never increased. Right? You've probably gotten this too. Yeah. How can I be in a higher tax bracket if taxes never go up and I'm actually not making an income anymore? Right? What are those big things that we may lose in retirement that we have while we're retiring? Right. Let's kind of elaborate on that as an example. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the tax laws have changed a lot. You, you, while you're working, you've got deductions. You're contributing maybe to a 401k and getting a tax deduction. You maybe have, you know, child credits. You have all these things that when you retire, they go away. And it's so the, the whole scenario, the, the idea that I will be in a lower tax bracket in retirement, that was just so broadly taught and accepted. And, and now with our massive, you know, national debt and deficits uh, and historic low tax rates, um, there's a significant risk the taxes will be higher and it will probably be in a higher tax bracket in retirement. Right. So tax planning becomes, in the retirement years, just becomes a huge issue that really hasn't been that in, in decades of the past. Right. Going along with that, how many people have you worked with that say, Lane, I hope I make more or less money in retirement. Right. 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 I, I don't see that. Yeah. You know, I, I found a lot of individuals that just are not wanting to be in a lower income. Right. Than when they while working before. Yeah. And the studies show when s surveying retirees um, saying, are you spending less in retirement or more in retirement? Um, it's about 50, 50, 50% 50 will say, yeah, it's a little bit less. 50% are saying, no, I'm spending the same amount and even more. Because while some expenses go away, there's new expenses that replace. And, and a lot of times people haven't really thought through that and looked at that. And so most people don't want to go into retirement and then reduce their income. Right. Right. So if they're not reducing their income, they need to look at other strategies, other alternatives that might actually help with those situations. Right. Right. You know, I recently uh, heard a really good example about that. You know, when we retire, we typically want to have our house paid off by the time we retire. Mm -hmm. So that's an expense that goes away. Right. So maybe we don't need as much in retirement. But right now, our largest, typically our other largest asset is going to be our retirement accounts, our yeah. employer account. 401ks, you know, SEPs, IRAs, those type of things. Mm -hmm. But how much of it is really ours to keep? Right. You know, we know today what tax rates are. We don't know if they might be in the future. Right. But another concept is our IRA is kind of like our mortgage. Do we want to have that tax paid off so we actually know what the value of it is? Right. That could be gone as, you know, as an example. Yeah. It's not fun to plan out your retirement with a bunch of variables. Right. And unknowns, right? There, there's there's always going to be unknowns. But for example, if you let's say you've done a great job, let's say you've got a million dollars saved up in your 401k, you've been contributing over the years, and it's grown, and you're looking at that, 
and you're seeing this balance and you're thinking that that's your money, right? Right. <laughs> the, the truth is you don't know what percentage is actually going to be spendable because it's a variable. The government can change the tax percentage. They, ha they have a lien on that money. And so um, tax play, there, there's a window of opportunity and there's a significant, um, there's a lot of money to be saved with smart multi-year strategies. And a lot of times people think it's too late. Oh, why didn't someone tell me sooner? It's, it's, it's not too late for most people. We have a window of, of opportunity. There is some time to get some things done, you know, repositioned, whether we're talking Roth conversions or whatnot, it can get complicated because you can make mistakes along the way. So you want to make sure you get it right. But, right. but yeah. No, that's good. Well, let's see if we can move on to another question here from... Okay. Uh, it, also, in your book, you mentioned that we're living longer nowadays. Yeah. Well, how is that? And I mean, how does that have such an impact on why we want to look at things maybe a little different? Yeah, longevity risk... Uh, is a, a risk multiplier, right? Because the longer you live, the longer you need income. The, the longer all the other bad things, that, you know, all the other risks that could threaten your, your assets have a longer period of time to manifest. And so and then you could get into more health costs or long-term care costs. And so, yeah, this this wasn't, in, you know, retirement planning and, and the type that we do, it, it wasn't even a thing. Hardly, you know, 30 years ago, it wasn't a thing. It was like safe withdrawal rate, you know, get your pension. If you have a little savings, great. And so it's, it's a really a whole different world. This, this generation is the baby boomer generation is now retiring where they have been responsible for their own contributions, their own 401k retirement accounts. Um, unlike generations before that, where they had pensions much more so, right? Right. So just like retirement financial planning has changed, the medical industry has changed, mm -hmm. right? I, I remember seeing a Time Magazine article that says this child could live to be like 150. Yeah. And I was going, this is crazy. Yeah. But it, a lot of it's just because of that medical advancements, right? Right. There's other things that are going on that could keep us living a lot longer than we were before. Hopefully it's a good, healthy life <laughs> and not, uh, you know, just being on the yeah. tube or something. But with that longevity... Our money's really got to last a lot longer. And so just like Social Security wasn't really designed to last nearly as long as it's lasting today. Right, right. Because our life expectancy has changed dramatically. Yeah. Great. Um, all right. So let's see what we've got. Some other ones here. I was actually thinking about this earlier today. It says, you know, every in every situation, people are unique, right? We all have different situations. Yeah. So... But it says the benefit of a good plan can make a life-changing difference. Let me kind of throw one thing that I kind of think on this, and then maybe you can hit off of this. But, you know, you, you hear a lot of financial gurus out there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a one-size-fits-all approach, mm -hmm. which can be difficult, right? Because everyone is unique. Yeah, My situation's different than the person next to me. You know, both of our situations might be a little different. So really actually having a plan specifically built for one individual mm -hmm. is key because there's all these different tools in the toolbox. You, know, you talk about it in your book, but not all those tools fit every individual, right? So just in general, broad stroke painting is difficult to do. Therefore, listening to some of the top yeah. gallers on the radio may not give 100% advice for mm -hmm. each individual situation. Right. Think of, uh, I like the medical analogy, right? I mean, you can say some general things that are good for your health, right? right. Eat proper amount, nutritious food, exercise, so forth, which is going to be benefit everyone. But yet, everyone has such unique, specific needs, right? Um, unique aches and pains and, and sicknesses and conditions that need very specific treatment. A, a, a prescription... From, for a medical, you know, diagnosis for one person that could be very beneficial for that person could be lethal for another person, right? Exactly. And so it's, it's really true with financial planning. Um, a lot of times 
you you might have one person with a real strong opinion about something. It's like, well, yeah, in that scenario, we would agree. In this scenario, it's entirely different. And and people have a hard time if they're not, they don't do this stuff, right? They don't really know those differences. Right. That I like that example just because, yeah, in one situation, this might be completely perfect for someone, somebody else, it, yeah, you just might not feel like that. So how do we combat some of these issues, right? How do we get answers to these questions? Mm -hmm. I know you've got a book that hits on multiples of these strategies. Yeah. There's other YouTube videos and so forth, but ultimately an individual consultation, right? Mm -hmm. How, how can that help individuals out there that maybe have never gone through that situation? I know one of the great things about working here, right? is I have access to a lot more tools than I had before. Yeah. Some of those software programs and things. Why is that so unique than just going to someone and saying, oh, well, here, here's a prescription, right, that might fit you because it fit this person over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I mean, again, I don't know why I keep coming back to the, the medical field, but, you know, you can want it to be a doctor. <laughs> I, actually, no. But a doctor... You, you go to a, a family doctor or you go to the ER or something. Um, and I just did that. I just had this, um, I jumped off a high dive. I thought I could do something in the air that I couldn't do anymore. <laughs> and I landed kind of on my side and there was a lot of pressure on my eye. And so I, anyway, I started seeing lights, flashing lights, and I was concerned I might have a tear, a tore retina. Anyway, I ended up, seeing a doctor and he looks at it and he says, he says, yeah, you need a specialist. You need to go um, to the eye doctor, ophthalmologist, right? And, and while the, the, the one doctor was skilled enough to say, you need a specialist, the specialist, I get to his office, he's got all the tools. I mean, he's got the machinery, he's got the scopes and he's, they get, you know, and he's just ready to go. They dilate my eyes, they're looking at everything. Um, and is, and you know, who do you want to deal with the, the generalist or the specialist in, the, in that situation? It, it's the same with financial services. So let's say we have some individuals out there that yeah. want to go see a specialist. Yeah. How do they do that? Or how much does it cost me? Right. Because that's another big thing. Yeah. I want, I want to see what my plan looks like, but how much is this really going to cost? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you want someone that you can trust. You want someone that's ethical. When, when you find someone that you want to work with, um, if, if you go to the doctor, they're going to ask you for all the details. They're going to ask you, they have to know all the details or the, in order to make a good recommendation. It's the same with holistic financial planning, right? So if, so if someone comes to us, they schedule a free consultation, uh, we can talk. There's not so far you can get it's really let's let's dive into the details so we need statements we need tax returns um income history real estate we, we have to see the whole thing and then we've got the tools to, to do some planning create efficiencies create income um anyway there yeah so they can reach out to us if yeah they're saying, sure yeah right of course and then we can help put together a plan a prescription so to say for their individual situation. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, martinsonwealth.com is our website. Um, free consultation uh, if you're interested in that. Um, so, yeah. Hey, I think we're probably running out of time on this video, but probably Ken Holmes, great man, good man. Um, great to have you on our team. Absolutely. Thanks.